All right, so I'm Ken Levine, the creative director of Irrational Games, and I am here with... Nate Wells, I'm the art director of Irrational Games. Sean Robertson, lead artist. And normally we, um, you know, I just came off an E3 where I made a big deal out of saying, well, we don't talk over our demos. We let our demos speak for themselves. And, yeah, we're, we're not going to do that today. We're going we're gonna to talk over our demo. But I do highly recommend that you just sort of watch it without us jabbering over it first. You know, there's a million sites you can find it on GameSpot, et cetera. Um, now, that said, after you watch it, come back and hear us. If you're interested, hear us um, talking about the making of this, um, of this E3 demo. So let's, uh, let's roll it. Us. Oh, here's where we're talking about how oh, awesome sorry, we are. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. We don't want to talk awesome. over this. God, we're, we're so awesome. awesome. We're numerically awesome. There we go. Um, so that logo, we can talk quickly about it because it lasts very short. That is a sort of an update of the original Bioshock logo. We, we sort of wanted to feel similar in style. The original Bioshock logo had all this um, uh, water effects. Yeah, it gradually rusted. This one gets gradually windblown because yes. Columbia's in the sky. It's been in the sky for a while. Uh, we had to have this moment very late where they were outside the store talking about it because we realized nobody had no idea what the hell this with the Booker were doing. Um, <laughs> yeah, we needed to establish yeah. store. Store. <laughs> we just kind of threw you into these, this store. Nobody... As if had any sense of where you were. The hobo well, bed is my favorite. Hobo bed. So this whole sequence with Booker and Elizabeth, I, um, this also didn't exist when we first started working on the demo in the store. Originally we started with the oh, bit where the songbird yeah. arrives, but stuff, we yeah. really wanted just to have a very Bioshocky moment of like, you know, what's more Bioshocky than going through some abandoned oh. store looking for loot? Um, we really wanted to have a Bioshocky moment that felt... Um, very too very familiar, but also what what is that like to have a Bioshock moment which is normally solitary with Booker with and Elizabeth, Elizabeth yes. for the ride and really help establish Elizabeth's character um, you know, kind of, you know, before you get to the serious drama stuff, which you just sort of like to hang out with Elizabeth. Clowning around yeah. wearing the Lincoln mask. And that's yeah. something, you know, that wasn't written early on. This was a reaction to what was going on in the store. So we, we started building props for the store and we had Lincoln Mass and we had these gold busts that, you know, writing these scenes was a reaction to what was actually in the store. Yeah, we saw, you know, like we see, you know, the, the gold nice. bust was there and I'm like, oh, well, wouldn't it it'd be cool if Elizabeth thought this was real gold and we were a little, little yeah. bit of business. Elizabeth. Um, and this is basically where the demo originally started and we just, you know, we thought there was a real opportunity to sell character first. Yeah. Mm. So, um, Nate, you want to talk about the challenges of, 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 of and Sean, about the challenges of, of building this sequence? Were there any challenges? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, definitely. Certainly animation challenges that Sean can talk about. Yeah, I mean, we, we wanted to sell, obviously, that the songbird is tracking you and, you know, that you're, you're stuck inside of this, this uh, store with Elizabeth and we didn't want to reveal too much of the songbird at this moment, so we, we constructed a space that kind of gives you a little glimpse of, of what the songbird is without letting on too much. And showing at the same time just how fearful Elizabeth, Elizabeth is of being taken I by him. Stop. And this is a good introduction to her saying very explicitly that she would rather die than go back to the songbird. Yeah, we really wanted to have the, the, the whole... There'd be a, the whole demo to have a story to it, you know? Well, like yes. the beginning, middle, and end. And, it's thematically tied to the larger story of the game because it's actually part of the, the real. This is actually part of the real game. I'm sure it will change somewhat when, yep. when the game ships, but this whole bit where Elizabeth, you know, telling her story about what she wants out of life, which is you know, control her own destiny and and be and be free of this sort of prison she's been in, and this is sort of a mini story within that of establishing her stakes and then you know, pl you know, seeing what happens with those stakes as as we go on. Yeah, and this this is actually part of the shipping level too, which is you know this building that you're you're trying to get to. So w one thing that a lot of people ask us about is, um, you know, the sort of scripted versus non-scripted nature of, of the level, um, and there are parts of it obviously that are that are um, 
uh, scripted, but there's interesting that the store, a lot of people thought that like Elizabeth, all the things to do with Elizabeth in the store were quite scripted and play out the same way every time. And actually that's not the case. Like in the no. store, there are ba- we have a system where, where basically there are bits of business that um, Elizabeth or other characters can take on. And depending on what the player is doing, depending on how appropriate it is, depending if there's combat going on, Elizabeth may or may not, or other characters may or may not do those sequences. They just sort of like improvise. They look, they have a library of things they can do, and they look to see yep. around, you know, is this a good time to do that? If the character had taken another route through the story, you may not have seen the Lincoln mask at all. You may, that may have been something that will show up at a later store or later exploration. Yep. And we have a system that sort of watches it and, 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 and sees and looks for opportunities, basically. Um, and I, I, we're going to talk more about that later, but I, I think there's, it's, it's when you, what when you, you watch a system at play and seeing Elizabeth just sort of reacting to you now and yes. we're sort of working through that, all the, that has a million kinks, so we're going to do all those kinks, that is really, or can be a really interesting component of this game and make everybody's play experience feel quite different. Yes, that's true. Uh, that? that bit right there was um, <clears throat> interesting, in, you know, the New York <laughs> bit. Um, yeah. Hey, you want to talk about how that came about? Sure. Uh, you know, the, we really wanted to communicate that Liz only had moderate control of her powers, and, and one of the reasons they need to get to Comstock House is that Liz is losing control of her powers. It's getting incredibly dangerous for her to use them. And we pitched a bunch of different things to show that. Initially, it wasn't a horse; it was a dog, and which was too small visually. Initially, she would the park would just get nicer, and then it got stranger with different plants, a sort of primordial forest. And then we realized that none of that was going to read. And Stephen and Ken sort of simultaneously came up with this idea. Uh, we had some modern assets. Um, we gave it a shot, and it almost immediately worked. And then we spent. You know, some time after that, refining it. But those assets we just had sitting around from our prototype of a game, which we never, which we never made, yeah, yep. and which we never talked about actually before. We never told anybody about. We never told anybody about that game. We still haven't told anybody yes, about that game. Sure. And, and that's still a, a top secret thing. But um, they, all of a sudden, we had all these assets. So like a day later, Stephen had put together that sure. whole New York scene. The the movie marquee that came later. But, yes. You know, but that to, to really set the time exactly what time it was. So here we have you yeah. in the midst of the Vox occupation here. This is another example of our system uh, putting AIs doing stuff as you're walking up the stairs. Yeah, and the, the, and the AIs we have the ability like you saw those guys that guy beating up the other guy a moment ago. AIs can just sort of look around to each other opportunistically opportunity. and say, like, hey, I'm available to do something cool. And then the other AI would say, yeah, well, why don't you come beat the crap out of me? Yeah. <laughs> and they'll just sort of dynamically do that if the, if that if that's ava- if that opportunity yes. is available. If it makes sense in the context of the situation. Um, you know, getting this working in the actual game, which, you know, you'll see, is like, what if the player turn around and started running the other direction? Elizabeth yep. will have to, you know, walk in the other direction or follow him, and, and that scene needs, still needs to play out and make sense. Um, so that's, you know, we have all these very complicated systems. And those systems are more than just curry. It's more than just a behavior system to make the city look alive. It can provide gameplay opportunities for the player, too. So it's, you know, something you want to perceive and, and keep an eye on. Here's a bit of the aesthetic of what we decided for the Fox Populi when they, they take over an area of the city. Now, the original thought was that they make it bleed. Um, and that led us to the idea that, you know, they, they basically paper the city with these, these, red, these red sheets, these red rags, and it gives the overall, overall impression that this, the buildings, these rich, affluent buildings, are, are actually bleeding onto the street. And it also gave them their, their color, which is red. Yes. Uh, to have the, you know, the, as compared to the founders who sort of built the city, you know, the Vox Populi are sort of imprinting themselves on top of the city. Yes. You, have this, you have to have the original aesthetic of the founders underneath, and then the, the Vox Populi. And you can see the Vox Populi here dressed in 